This is Your Money, Your Wealth. Welcome to another episode of Your Money, Your Wealth. My name is Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner, president of Pure Financial Advisors. As always, I'm with the big man. He's sitting right over there, Big Al Clopine. Thanks for tuning in. We have a phenomenal show lined up over the next half an hour. Right now, the markets are a little volatile. Are you looking at your investments? Here's what happens when you start looking at your investments. You start to worry. I don't care if the markets are at all-time highs. You worry that the markets are going to go down. When the markets are start to go down, you worry that the market is going to go to zero. When you worry, you start making mistakes with your money. That's what's on my mind today. Here we go. We're going to talk about five key mistakes that you're making with your money and some strategies on how to avoid them. They're simple things. There's a lot of things that you're doing wrong with your overall investments, and sometimes you don't even know you're making the mistakes. So to help me out with this, let's bring on Big Al Clopine. Big Al, here we are. Second week of the show of common mistakes, and I think it's probably the best time to talk about this when we see a little bit more volatility in the overall markets. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. And as you said, we actually did this show last week with five other mistakes. Uh, but this week we got five more, and these are probably even more common than last week. So you're going to want to pay attention to how to avoid these mistakes. And, and starting off right off the bat, we're going to talk about lack of diversification or poor diversification. In other words, you have all your eggs in, in one basket. And you've heard this before. Don't hold just a few stocks. Have a lot of different investments. So if one goes up or down, it's not going to affect you that much. Uh, number two is, is um, not enough patience. You know what happens when the market caves, we want to get out, we want to sell, and that's not always the best approach, which we'll get into. And then there's downside exposure that people don't really quite fully understand and realize, which means the market can go down, and it does go down. So what do you do when that happens? We're kind of in a volatile uh, environment right now. And then the next one is really poor allocations. For those of you that uh, feel like you are very well diversified, but you may have all your assets in, say, an S&P 500 fund, and that's a good asset class, but that's not the only one. You probably want about 12 or 13 or 14 other ones as well. And then finally is many of you don't have a plan. You don't really know how to invest and what to do in different markets, how much to save, how much you can spend in retirement, and most importantly, how you should be invested. So I think what we'll do today is we'll jump right in. And I want to I wanna kick off with a, a video on Enron. You guys remember Enron. This was, um, this was over 10 years ago, a, a disaster that uh, can't happen to any of us. It had taken Enron 16 years to go from about 10 billion of assets to 65 billion of assets. It took them 24 days to go bankrupt. It got hungrier and hungrier. Sooner or later, they were doomed to go off that cliff at 90 miles an hour. It's astounding that they got away with it for so long. In reality, Enron was a, a house of cards. What we didn't know is that the house of cards had been built over a pool of gasoline. It all sort of became smoke and mirrors. I, I think it's important to talk about this because there's such a lack of diversification in a lot of your overall portfolios. In Enron, it's just a classic case, right? It's like, okay, well, here, is that, that, that's not going to happen to me. But just talk to the people that had Enron stock back then, and I guarantee you they were saying the th same things. It's not going to happen to me. You know, there's a lot more regulation today and everything else, but stocks are volatile. If you own one individual stock, you have the jeopardy of losing a big portion of your overall portfolio. And Enron, I think, is a, is a good piece to, to educate, to bring people back and say, hey, you know what, diversification is still the only free lunch in town. Well, I think so, and, and really when you think about it, so this illustrates why you do need to be diversified. And I'm going to give you a little story. So Enron was... Is this story time by Big Al Clopine? It is. Okay. It is All right. Now, <laughs> where's yeah. the light music? I know. Where's the stinger? <laughs> yeah. huh? I don't know. I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that. Go ahead. Uh, so this is... So Enron, it was a disaster for a lot of investors, but it was very personal to a lot of employees, like Tom Padgett. And this is he and his, his wife, Karen. Tom was about four or five months away from retirement. He was 59 years old. He had $615,000 in his 401k. He had been diligently saving into that 401k, $600 per month for his entire career. 
and they didn't go on vacations or a lot of vacations. They put three kids through college. They were about ready to retire. And here's what happened. Of course, Enron, we, we know, the company went bankrupt in a short amount of time. And his portfolio went from $615,000 to $11,000, $11,000. It went down 98%. And this happened to a bunch of people. So you're thinking, well, how could this happen? Well, he had over 90% of his investments in Enron stock. That's concentrated. That's not diversified. When you're talking about your retirement assets, you want to be diversified. You don't want to be concentrated because you can very easily strike out. Yeah, I mean, diversification, like I said before, is the only free lunch. But when you look at employers, they have company stock. And then when I'm an employee of that employer, I want to be, hey, I, I want to get all into the company stock. And a lot of people do that. We see that right here in San Diego. Uh, sdg and &E employees is a prime example of that. A lot of you have your own company stock, and you have pride within that. I'm not saying don't hold the stock, but you don't necessarily want to ride 90% of your overall wealth in the company. Because if you look at this example here, right, he lost 98% of his portfolio, and he also lost his job. Exactly. So he doesn't have an income. He doesn't have any assets, and he's 59 years old. Now he has to go back to work. Diversification is the only free lunch. If you take a look at this slide, right, so, all right, you never strike out or you never hit a home run. You always want to continue to hit base hits. If you're trying to hit home runs all the time, you're likely to strike out. Babe Ruth was the home run king, but also the strikeout king. You don't necessarily want to have that as an investment strategy. Well, that, that's exactly right. And so this is the key, is concentration is not your friend, as I mentioned, in retirement. So what that means then is, is you're not going to hit a home run. You only hit a home run if you pick one or two stocks well. If you would have picked Apple or Qualcomm at the right time, you'll hit a home run. Well, here's the best thing, right? The, the, the absolute best investment that anyone can own is one individual stock, by far. That is sure. the best investment you can own. On the flip side, the worst investment you can own is one individual stock. So you don't necessarily know what stock to pick. If you take a look at the S&P 500, the overall rate of return of the S&P 500, there's been many studies here, and it looks at about 20 to 30% of the overall return of the S&P 500, that's 500 stocks, come from anywhere from six to eight stocks. For you thinking that you could pick those stocks, it's like trying to pick the lottery winner. It's not going to happen. You can get lucky, but that is not an investment strategy. So you want to make sure that you're completely diversified. You have thousands of different companies, several different countries, um, and globally diversified across a the world. Absolutely. And then, of course, the next thing is, is a lot of us don't have much patience when it comes to investing. And really, when you think about it, patience means that you stay the course. You get the right investment strategy in the first place, which takes a little effort, but then you stay the course. And here's an example of what happens to most people is they far underperform regular investment returns. So what you're seeing is on the left is a, is a normal investment return. Uh, what's on the right is uh, the investor return. And the Dalbar study does, they, they're a company in Massachusetts that look at this every year. The last 30 years, the market has gone up around 11% per year on average, and the average investors earn three and a half. And why? Because they're buying and selling at the wrong time. Right, and that's so common. You're buying and selling at the wrong time until you continue to go broke. Don't let that happen to you. What we're going to give away today to all of our viewers is a free investor toolkit. This is big. This is brand new from our company. You have to get your hands on this. We can walk you through it to make sure that you're not making mistakes. When markets are volatile, that's when people worry. That's when you make the wrong decisions. Call the number right now to get our investor toolkit, 888-994-6257. That's the number, 888-994-6257. We got a lot more to go. Don't go anywhere. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth.